So let me ask you a question real fast. You're going to play Inspector Gadget in your relationship. Listen, listen, listen. Anytime you have to play Inspector Gadget in your relationship, it's time to move on. Like, like I'm going to be honest with you. Anytime I feel the need to check your phone to make sure that you're not doing something, I'm going to just give you a quick bar. I got to go. And also, it don't matter if you check their phone or not. If they're going to cheat, they're going to cheat whether you find out. Man, you are really encouraging me, motivating me, inspiring me. But God is really using you to help me out. Hello, family. I want to welcome you to AOS the podcast. I'm your host, Mr. AOS Inspires. This is what I need you to do. We're on every single platform, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I need you to go and subscribe and follow us right now. We drop content every single day day that'll help you with your life because our mission here at AOS the podcast is to empower the world to never give up one conversation at a time one interview at a time one video at a time to help you live life at the next level I want you to live life on the next level I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that's watching this episode this is going to be a dynamic episode I need you to dive in do me a big favor I need you to like share and comment. Don't be a stranger. I like comment with us. And this is what I need you also to do. I need you to copy this link right here on this podcast, this episode, and share it with at least 10 of your friends. I promise you it's going to help them out. Let's jump into the episode. Lego. What's going on, family? I want to welcome you to another episode of AOS The Podcast. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Listen, I had a conversation with somebody and the question was coming up like, yo, do you check your person's phone, the person that you're in a relationship with phone? Do you check their... I, I don't believe in doing that. Now, I'm, I'm going to just keep it all the way funky with you. Um, I'm transparent in this episode, this podcast. Y'all already know I'm transparent. But I, I did deal with something like that in my first marriage. I did check the phone. And that's how I found out that my first marriage was going downhill, right? And I tell people this, like, I'm going to really keep it funky, which is the old school type uh, uh, advice. Like, if you don't want to know or you don't want to find something, it's crazy because they always say this, if you go looking for something, you're going to find something. And it's not necessarily, now I'm, I'm going to tell you this, that statement is not saying that if you go looking for something, you're going to find something because they're doing something. That's not what it is. Usually when you go looking for something, this is what that statement means. If you go looking for something, this suggests that you're going to find something that's not necessarily true about your spouse, but it's you're looking for them to see if they're cheating and you're going to find something that depicts that they're cheating. And they may not be cheating. They may not be messing with nobody, but since your insecurities is running high, you're going to find something that you don't agree with. Like, hold on. Why are you having a conversation with him like this? Like, why y'all talking like this? I tell, I tell every single couple, if I have to or you have to play Inspector Gadget in a relationship like you're a detective, like you need to go. And there should be, now let's, let's, let's peel back this layer real fast. There should be some type of level of trust in a relationship. So many of you all don't have trust in your relationship, so you don't trust the person, right? And now, these are three, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you three areas real fast that, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm making up on the spot, but there's three areas that I really want people to horn in on. Discipline, that's a major one, right? And the reason I say discipline, I'm, I'm going to just give you the three real fast. Discipline, uh, insecurity, that's, that's a major key. Discipline insecurity, and being healed. Those are three areas that I think that a lot of relationships has to work on. Number one, discipline. The reason I say discipline is because most people, most people, let's clear this up. Most people check their spouse's phone and they feel like they're doing something because chances are they're doing something. They're having conversation that they have no business having. They're talking to people in manners that they have no business talking to them in. Let's really be, let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade. All the situations and all of the, 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 the relationships that I've ever had the pleasure of talking to or counseling or giving some words of advice or giving some sound wisdom, usually when there's some, some suspicion, right? We're not talking about, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not talking about people playing. That's not what I'm saying. Like you guys play in your marriage and you're like, oh, your little girlfriend, you know, I'm not, 
I'm, you know, now I get it. Behind every joke, there's some truth. However, there are some couples that just play like that. Like, you know, I mean, don't take it too far now, but you know, there's some couples that are playful like that. I find no issue with it, right? But it depends on how you play. Some some relationships, some relationships dynamics, they don't like that that type of play, right? So it, it all it's all cool in the game. So it all depends on what works for you and your relationship. But uh, most times, most statistics show that the people that are thinking that their spouse is doing something or they're blaming their spouse for doing something. Generally, they are busy doing something, right? And it never fails. They're doing something that they have no business doing. So the first one was discipline. The second one's insecurity. Check your insecurities at the door. Everybody has some level of insecurities, right? And when I say some level of insecurities, it's not to the degree where... um you feel insecure because another man is saying something to your woman. Oh, 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 is my wife cheating? Or is my girlfriend cheating? Or if another woman says something, not that insecurity, right? I'm talking about the insecurity to the degree where uh, if somebody crossed the line, and I get it, some of y'all going to say, oh, but they crossed the line. No, 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 no. But some of you, before they cross that line, you, you skeptical, like, hold on now, jealousy rises up. Right. And I, I I look at it like this. I'm going to say this. And this is just how I feel. There's no scripture back in it. There's no facts. This is just how I feel. I don't think that it's a bad thing to be jealous. And the reason I say that, because the Bible says it says it explicitly. God is a jealous God. Right now, I think that the damaging part for us. Right. Is that when people are jealous and there's no need to be jealous. It's just that you haven't checked your insecurities at the door. Maybe your insecurities just run too deep. Let's really be honest, right? And I'm going to talk to all facets of relationships as it pertains to this because many of you feel like, yo, I, 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 should, I should check it if you're not hiding anything. No, 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 no. I don't believe that. You shouldn't want to check it. Even Listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm just, listen, I'm just tell you this. If you feel the need, I'm going to say this all throughout this whole episode. If you feel the need to check the person's phone that you're in relationship with, get out of the relationship. If you're married and you feel the need to check it, it's time to call it quits. I'm just, I'm just keep it all the way funky with you, right? Now, I get it. You're saying, hey, hey, but you don't know that they cheated before in the past. Cool. I understand. Either you forgive them and move on or you handle what you need to handle and you guys part ways, I'm not going through your phone to see. Now, I, I get it. I can see that if you're just looking at something and you just happen to, you know, stumble across it because maybe you're looking at an Instagram post and something pops up. That's something totally different. You're not going through their phone. That's that's a totally different situation. Right. But I want you to check your insecurities at the door. Everybody has a hint, a level, some type of level of insecurities. Everybody does. Every single, because I'm going to tell you this, if you say something sideways to somebody's wife, they're going to be looking at you like, hold on, what you just say? You, you trying to holler at my wife or you trying to holler at my guy, right? Because I know, you know, if, if something is said sideways, you know, my wife is checking them at the door. Like, what's going on? And it's not that she's insecure. It's that she's so in tune with me and she loves me so much that it's like, yo, that's my guy, right? Uh, the third one was what? I said the first one was discipline. Uh, the second one was insecurities. And the third one, what did I say, y'all? The third one was um, insecurities, discipline, and um, ah. Uh, when we go back and edit this video, I'm, I'm, I'll be able to know what it is. Uh, I forgot right now. Insecurities. Um, uh, I forgot, y'all. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It'll come back to me. But I, I want y'all to be <laughs> some episode that we're doing today, huh? Listen, I, I, this is why I drop episodes like this and I give you guys the raw, I give you guys the real because the one thing I hate, I hate scripted things. I Listen, this this podcast, this particular podcast, now we're, we're, we're drumming up some new brands, but this particular podcast will not ever, ever be scripted. I want to give you guys the raw because I really want to help people out. It's not about views. We're getting views. We're growing, right? We're, we're you know, we're getting a little change. Not much money, you know, a couple of dollars, right? But 
uh, I, I, my whole mission is, you already know, is to empower the world to never give up one conversation at a time, one interview at a time, one video at a time to help you get to the next level. I, I'm producing content to make you relational, right? Relationally. Think outside the box. And also, entrepreneurs, I want to motivate you, right? That's why I'm dropping content to inspire you, motivate you, and get you to the next level. This topic today is a very important topic because many of y'all, like I, 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 I had somebody ask me, they was like, hey, is it a problem if I check my wife's phone? Yes. Because number one is suggesting that you don't trust her. Like, why are you in a relationship with somebody? Let's, 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 let's really be honest. Why are you in a relationship with somebody that you don't trust? And that's the layer that I do want to peel back because foundational, the relationship, your relationship is built off of, it should be built. Let's say that your relationship should be, ought to be built off of trust. If there is no trust in the relationship, you have nothing to stand on. I'm going to say that again for the sound bite. If I don't trust you, in this relationship, we have nothing to stand on because my mind is always going to be running. My mind, and I'm going to tell you this, many of y'all, y'all so toxic, you love being in relationships where you don't trust a person. And I know many of y'all, I don't like being in a relationship, that I don't, yes you do, because you stay in that toxic, dysfunctional relationship year after year, second after second, minute after minute, month after month, week after week, day after day. You stay in this toxic relationship, and this is the sad What's part. going on, family? I know that you're enjoying the episode, but I had to pause to ask you a quick question. Have you ever been through anything in life that was so life-altering that it changed your life forever? I mean, have you ever been and had a job, and you lost that job? I mean, your dream job. You lost that job for whatever reason. Maybe you're an entrepreneur. You started a business, and the business started off great, and then it seemed as if it was going downhill. And now you're at a place... You lost your marriage, you lost your children, you lost some major things in your life. And now you're at a place in life where you're like, hey, this is the end of the road. I, I, like, I don't see it getting better. I got news for you. It will get better. And I wrote a book just for you. It's entitled Winning After a Major Loss. You need to go and get your copy. Go to barnesandnoble.com, go to amazon.com, get your copy right now, Winning After after a major loss. I promise you, it's going to change the trajectory of your life. It's going to change your mindset. Most importantly, it's going to change your heart about your situation because I promise you, you can win after a major loss. Go get your copy now. Barnes and Nobles, amazon.com. Order your copy now. Let's get back to the episode. You know that you can't trust this brother. You know you can't trust that. So you listen, why are you, you are with this person because number one, you like dysfunction. You like toxicity. You enjoy, uh, I'm, I, let's really be honest. I, I, I listened to the Cat Williams interview and he says, something so dope. Toxic women are fun. Whether you want to agree or not, toxic women are fun. All the toxic women in the back, y'all shut your mouth. Listen, they are fun. Toxic women are are fun. Now, let's break down this toxicity. Many toxic women, now, you know, you got to look at it as, as different angles, right? Uh, what does toxic mean to you now? Yeah, it all depends on how you look at it because most toxic women, right? Now, is toxic a good thing or a bad thing? That's, 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 that's relative. Like you may think it's good. Somebody else may think it's bad. It's all relative, right? We all have different likes. We all have different angles and different dislikes, different desires, different wants, right? So it's going to be different for everybody. However, toxic women and toxic guys are exciting to the other sex, to the opposite sex. They're exciting. Why? Because most toxic people are always spontaneous. They love most toxic people love to have a good time. Let's really be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. Many of you, many of y'all that's watching this right now are super toxic, but you super fun to be around, right? I, I, I was having a conversation with my best friend this week, and we were just breaking down relationships. And this is what I said: you got to learn what you can deal with, right? What I can deal with and what you can deal with as a man is two different it's two different weights it's two different levels right I may can deal with clinginess I may can deal with a woman that just wants all of my time 
However, on the flip side, this is real life. I'm not just using this as, as an example. I can't deal with a woman with a nasty attitude. I can't deal with a woman that will say hurtful things, you know, and I'm not saying, um, I'm saying this, not not even in a joking manner. I can't deal with a woman that says disrespectful things to me in a, in a, in, in, in the moment of her being angry or just being aggressive. I can't deal with that. However, there are some men that can deal with it. There are some men that are cool with their woman being really, really, really aggressive. I mean, just cussing them out. They can handle that. I can't. Right. It'd be World War Three. I don't believe in hitting women, but it will be World War Three in that house, period, because I'm a dominant man. Right. And with the dominant feature or dominant mentality or dominant personality, most dominant people, let's really be honest, most dominant people can't deal with disrespect from another person at all. Right. And that's why many relationships don't work when both parties are dominant. It's hard to have two. Do Somebody got to be submissive. Somebody got to bow down. That's truth. I ain't trying to be funny, but that's real. Somebody has to be like, you know what? You got it. Right. Somebody got to throw in that towel. And listen, both parties can't be uh, to the degree where it's like, yo, I, I, no, it's my way. No, 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 it's my way. It can't be like that. Right. So. Um, just listen, listen, let, let me, if you, if you got to check your guy's phone, leave him alone. All right. I'm telling you this, to, I'm telling this to women. I'm telling this to men because there are many men, mostly women that say that they forgive you. But when something comes up that's similar or they feel like we're going down the path again of you cheating, they bring up old stuff. All right. I want to, I want to publicly in this episode, put this out there. If you forgive that person, man or woman, right? No matter who you are, because some of the fellas, y'all hold, we hold grudges too sometimes. Sometimes we still, listen, babe, I forgive you for this, but we keep on bringing it up time after time. We get in every argument. But you remember what you did last week, though, y'all? I know I forgave you, but you remember, you know, so if you forgive a person, let's peel this layer back. If you forgive somebody, forgive them and move on. I know it's difficult. I get it. It's hard, but I'm not. Okay. Let me say this before I said what I'm going to say it. I'm not going to be in a relationship that you cheated on me. I forgave you, but then I'm going to still go through your phone as if I don't trust you. I get it. Trust has been breached, right? Because a lot of y'all ladies are going to make excuses. The reason I check his phone because he cheated. Okay, cool. So if you got to keep on checking his phone, leave. What kind of life is that to live? That's too much. I'm going to tell you this. If a man cheats on you one time, chances are if the opportunity comes again, he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Unless, unless. Now, I'm, I'm going to just say this. There's no such thing as how I accidentally cheated. No, you didn't accidentally cheat. Right. There's no such thing as I accidentally cheat. You, you can't you can't accidentally fall into somebody else's bed. No, it's intentional. Right. You may have tried to um, push against it or you may have tried like, nah, nah, that's not right. You mean, you know, but temptation got the best of you. Right. However, I mean, you just you just don't accidentally cheat. So what I'm saying is I'm not saying this for every man. Let's 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 get this out the box. Not every man, if he cheats one, he'll cheat, he'll cheat again. But a big percentage of men, big percentage of women, if they cheat one time, chances are they'll cheat again. And I want, I, I want y'all to really peel back that layer, right? Now, a lot of people, and I don't believe this, a lot of people will say, once a cheater, always a cheater. This is why you have so many people that look, look through their spouses or their person that they're in relationship phone, but everybody not married. So they look to the person that they're in relationship, they look through their phone because of that type of insecurity. Most people that have cheated and you forgave them and they're still looking through your phone, they may have forgiven you, but the pain that the hurt caused, they have not gotten over that yet. That's why they keep on checking it because they feel like, yo, they're going to do it again. No, I mean, that's, that's, and that's the whole point. Why am I going to still be in a relationship with the person? Because number one, as I check your phone, this signifies that I believe that you're going to do it again. This also signifies I don't trust you. 
This also signifies that I am not secure enough in myself to say, you know what? I'm stepping away. You know what? You got it. You got it. I can't, I can't move further in this relationship because the pain cuts too deep. Let's really be honest. Like this pain cuts deep. And I refuse to allow myself to be in this situation month after month, year after year, day after day, because I don't trust you. One of the most dangerous, I'm a, and this is real. Let's really be, let's let, listen. Like, 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 like they say, let's keep it a buck. One of the most dangerous relationships to be in is a relationship where you don't have trust. That's what, listen, that's a bar. One of the most, and I'm not saying it's the number one, but it's in, it's in the top five. When I don't trust you, that's a dangerous relationship to be in. And the reason when I don't trust you is because now my mind gets to running and it gets to going. And when your mind gets to going and gets to running, this is what happens. You think irrational, you act irrational, and you move irrationally, right? You make decisions off of emotions. Why? Because there's an emotional factor inside of me that doesn't trust you anymore, right? I get it. They cheated. I, I understand. But there's still an emotional factor that's inside of you that you don't trust them no more because you feel like they'll do it again. And they don't say it. I forgave you. And uh, listen, I'm going to tell you this. This is why I say I don't believe that theory because, you know, uh, DJ Envy, you know, he wrote a book. He cheated on his wife and he asked for forgiveness. And I'm, 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 I'm going to share this with us. I'm going to share this with you. Right. I know that I said that you shouldn't check their phone. However, there's going to be some cases where you may have to give them your phone, right? My wife has the password to my phone. She knows the email, my, my emails, every, like she got everything, right? I have nothing to hide. For what? I'm going to share this with us, right? Before we talk about DJ Envy. Cheating is a full-time job, especially those that cheat and lie. When you cheat and lie to the person that you're cheating with, that's a that's overtime. Why? Because they really don't know your situation. You lie. You didn't tell them that you was married. You told them that you were single, but you don't pick up the phone at night, right? Cheating is a is 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 a, is a second job. And when you lie to them, it's like overtime. But the reason I put I I, I wanted to bring up DJ Envy was because he wrote the book. He cheated on his wife. He asked for forgiveness, and he had to do some stuff to gain her trust back. Right? This is why I say the the the, the saying "once a cheater, always a cheater." But there is a big percentage. Studies do show this that if you cheated once, chances are you will cheat again. I want to get into that cheating part too, but. Um, I'm looking at DJ Envy. I don't know his situation. I don't know if he hasn't cheated. I don't know. But what he has told the public is that he has not cheated again. Now, be prepared, ladies and men. If you're the one that has cheated, be prepared to roll out the red carpet to make them feel comfortable. And if you don't get to the place where you're like, listen, baby, I'm going to do whatever it takes, man or woman, I'm going to do whatever it takes to gain your trust back. If you're not willing to do that after you have cheated, you are a trifling person. You trifling. And the person that's dealing with you needs to say, holler at me later. Matter of fact, don't holler at me later. I'm gone. They need to leave. Because if you don't want to do the necessary procedures or the necessary steps to make the person that you claim that you love, that you cheated on, feel comfortable being in a relationship with you again and fully being committed to you and really fully trusting you and you don't want to do the steps, Whatever, whatever it takes. If it takes you calling them every time you get to your destination, you need to do that. If it takes for you to hey, hey go my phone right here when you get home, go ahead and do your thing. Do that, right? You need to do everything you need to do, especially when they take you back and forgive you and trying to move forward and trying to build a relationship with you again. Like this is what you need to do. You need to do everything possible. To make them feel comfortable. And I know many of y'all, y'all gonna be trifling and smart. I ain't trying, I ain't, listen, if they don't trust me, they just don't trust me. Well, guess what? Guess what? Move on. Stop wasting their time. And I wanna talk to cheaters. I, I understand. I'm not hard on you guys. You men or women, though, you those that cheat, I'm not hard on you because I understand. I tell people this all the time. How does cheating happen? Cheating happens most times when there's a deficiency in the house. 
And it kills me when women be like, I do everything. I, I give him sex when he want to. And I just do everything. I'm just that. Okay, cool. I, I get it. I, I, you think that you're the perfect per You think that you had no dealings and no doing in, in leading him this man to cheat. You're sadly mistaken. Just like women will say to men, you don't want to communicate your feelings. That may be true. Most men are not good communicators as it pertains to their feelings. However, women, you ladies are not great communicators either. Why? In some areas. Why? Because you communicate about your feelings. You communicate about things that you want to do, but you don't communicate to him on a level where he feels comfortable and vulnerable talking to you about the deficiencies in the relationship. Maybe, just maybe, you don't give him enough sex. Maybe you don't give him enough stimul mental stimulation. Maybe it's just that. Or maybe you're stuck in your ways and you're like, listen, I never change. I ain't cooking. I ain't cleaning. I ain't doing whatever. So what I'm saying is most times I'm talking about for men, most men cheat because of deficiency of something that they don't get at home. And they're looking for that in another woman. That's why most side chicks, right, are the fun ones. I mean, like guys have fun with the side chicks. I mean, have major fun with the side chicks. Why? Because it's just a good time, period. But I, I, really, I want to get back to the main before I let you guys go. If you feel it necessary, right, especially those that your person hasn't never cheated, if you feel it necessary to check their phone, you need to recheck and reevaluate your whole relationship. Because if I'm checking your phone, that's another job. So when you check somebody's phone, let's go do this real fast before I let you go. I'm checking your phone. I got to make sure that you're not coming to the room. I got to make sure I put the phone back the way that it was so that you won't suspect me looking through your phone. That's too much. I'm going to just start with those two. That's too much. Then many of you go as deep as now you got to check and write down the phone number, star 67, the phone, just to see who picks up. That's too much. I would rather to tell you this relationship will not work because I don't trust you and go about my business rather than stay in toxicity and dysfunction in a place where I feel like I'm being cheated. Now I'm done. The danger of cheating, they can bring some home to you and that will be the worst. Many people say, what, what, what is your main factor? How do you not cheat? I don't cheat because I hear horror stories all the time where women catch diseases from men that they thought was, was faithful to them and committed to them, but they stepping out. My thing is, if you're going to cheat, why go raw dog? It's my thoughts. Listen, I love you guys. I'm gone. What's going on, family? I want to say thank you for rocking with us during this episode. We have been so excited to drop this episode. I'm glad that you made it to the end. This is what I want you to do. If you have any takeaways from this episode, leave it in the comments. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear how you feel. I want to bring content to you that's relevant to you, that'll help you change your life because you already know our mission here at AOS Inspires, AOS the podcast, is to empower the world to never give up one conversation at a time, one interview at a time, one video at a time to help you live life at the next level. This is what I need you to do. I need you to like, subscribe, share, share this episode. If it spoke to your life, share this episode with somebody. Why? Because you are connected to some people that we're not connected with. And with that connection together, we can empower the world to never give up. I'm Mr. AOS Inspires. This is AOS The Podcast. I can't wait to see you next week. Just in case you didn't know, we drop every single week, three times a week, Mondays, 8 a.m., Wednesdays, 8 a.m., and Fridays, 8 a.m. You need to catch an episode. Matter of fact, catch all three episodes. It's going to be fire. I promise you it's going to help you doing your everyday life. It's going to help you get to the next level. Let's go.